Keith McGowan here, The Outdoor Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. We're going to continue on with our Mercury Outboard rebuild. Been having a lot of fun with this. Some great comments. Had a guy that does dirt bikes about the similar size pistons. Had a lot of comments. Uh, had some people have comments about how it's possible that so many of these cylinders got so damaged, probably overheated several times. Um, a lot of good advice as well, and I, I appreciate that. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to take a little time and kind of do an evaluation a little deeper here. We're going to get some tools out. <clears throat> so we have a dial bore gauge here. This is a west, westward one. Uh, some real machinists only stick with Starrett or some other brands that they like to follow. Uh, this one has worked well for me for many years, even though it's got a little crack in the glass here. It still operates. So the first thing I do, so we have the one piston that we know is good. Doesn't have any scoring on it, right? It's in decent shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our micrometer and we're going to measure the skirt of this piston, which is usually the widest part of the piston. Now you're going to get a lot of opinions out there of where you should measure it, what you should be looking for. Everybody has their way. I'm not trying to take away from someone else's uh, opinions of how they've done things. This is what I've been taught over the years from some old timers. And it's what's been the most successful for me. I've had more successful rebuilds that have lasted 10 plus years by following these process. So I already have this set up, so I already know what it is. I like to put it in the vise here because then I can hold my piston over a little better, but just to show you how we're measuring, right? Obviously the top of the piston is gonna be the smallest part. So we're gonna get down to the skirt here. Now, if you look at the skirt, it hangs down below this. We're gonna be right along the bottom of the wrist pin is where I found it to be the largest part of this piston. And if you see, it just slips over there, nice and easy, not too tight, right? It's not binding, but it does rub when I go through there. And then we'll take you over here to the vise and show you how we set this up, or how I was taught to set this up. So basically I wanna have a baseline for what size I wanna bore if I'm boring out or what my bore size is compared to my piston size. So if I hold my piston in here and I line it up at the skirt and I take my lock off and I bring it in just so it starts to rub on that skirt, not too much further, right? <clears throat> I don't want it to be squeezing it, but I want it, and I don't want to have any play either, either way as well. Now I can also turn the piston 90 degrees and check it and see, see how I just got it to, to slide down there. And I can make sure that that's about where we want it to be. Top of the piston is going to have some slop in it. So we want to find that widest part of the piston. Right, and I'm gonna turn it again to see, because sometimes over time they can get a little elongated with heat, right? So that's about where I wanna be. So I know I can lock myself in here. So now I'm gonna take my dial bore gauge and I'm gonna put it inside here and I wanna zero out my dial bore gauge, right? So right now, that's what I'm showing. And I wanna run this down to zero, right? So that my largest part of this opening is on zero. So once I've got it zeroed out and I know that's the largest section that matches my piston. So if I let it go easy, it doesn't go all the way around. Now I can take this over to my bore and measure to see the difference. So if you remember, we had this one bore here, except my ring inside there. And I'm gonna start near the top, right? And I'm gonna measure down as I go. So I wanna be right where my rings ride up and down. And I wanna measure this way and then I want to measure a 90 at 90 degrees. I could turn it around so I could see the gauge better. 
This way I'm measuring two things, what my piston wall clearance is on this particular piston, and also measuring to see if I'm out of round. So right now I'm pretty consistent. You see I'm rocking it back and forth, and you can see it's pretty consistently at eight and a half, maybe eight to five thousandths, right? So now I wanna know if that's correct. Is that the, the piston wall clearance that I want to have? So I'm going to open up my book and I'm going to look it up. And when I look at the numbers here, my bore is 3.491 and my piston is 3.493 or it could be 5, right? So when we checked, we were closer to 3, which is actually an 8 thousandths from the factory. So if I'm at eight and a half thousandths or eight and a quarter thousandths here in this hole, I'm not too much different from factory spec. We also know that we had 120 pounds of pressure when we did our compression test on that one. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take a piston ring. I'm gonna put it in this cylinder at the top, maybe have it go down maybe a quarter inch. So we'll get a little closer shot here. Then I'm gonna take my piston and I'm gonna push it down in there about half, three quarters of an inch, half inch, so that I know my ring is straight inside there. Then I'm gonna take my feeler gauges and I'm gonna measure, since I already measured this, I know where I'm at, with these two put together, there's my ring gap, right? Nice and tight. So I have my rings in here, my one set of ring in here, and now I know that's where I'm at, and that's 29 thousandths. So my two together, 14 and 15 is 29 thousandths. So when I check my gap, my ring gap from the factory says 27 thousandths. So that's my wear, so I know how much I've worn with this engine. Well, with this particular cylinder anyway, we see the other ones have, wo have worn unevenly because of overheat. So we're really not too far off. This one can be honed, new set of rings. So, but let's say our dial bore gauge was a little off. Let's say our um, micrometer reading we were a little off on because it's easy to get these off by a thousandth or two. So what do we do to ensure? So again, this is an old school trick that an old timer taught me that you can't go by for boring and, and honing, but you can go by as a check. So we knew we were a little over eight thousandths. So if I take my eight thousandths feeler gauge and I put it, pull my, my piston ring out and I take my feeler gauge and just put it in the side here. Let me show it this way, right? And then I slip in my piston. Oh, that one's got rings on it. Let's get our good piston. And I slip it in here and I push down on it and it slides in and it's pretty tight at eight thousandths. So if I'm gonna go ahead and take the next size up, which should be nine thousandths. Now when we measured, we came up with about eight and a half, eight and a quarter, eight and a half is kind of where we're at. So if I try to slip the nine in there, it's tight, right? I can get it to go in there, but it's tight. So that tells me we're pretty accurate with our eight and a half thousandths piston wall clearance. We also know that we had good compression at 120. It's probably 130, 135 when it was new. I also don't have a ridge at the top of my cylinder. There's no ridge. If this is really a worn engine, really uh, overused or a lot of hours on it, you would have a ridge at the top because the top quarter inch, maybe eighth of an inch of the cylinder wall doesn't get any friction on it, right? It'll have a little more carbon on it. So there's no ridge to actually make a ridge reamer that you can put in there to take the ridges out, which you would do in a boring honing process anyway. So now we know kind of we have a baseline of what is considered a good cylinder. So this one could be honed. We're not going to take any, you know, maybe... Uh, not almost immeasurable, maybe a tenth of a thousandths we could take off of this with honing, 
Um, I would still like to go in with a little heavier grit hone to start with because you need some deep scratches to hold that oil and then finish up with a, with a finish hone, maybe a quarter of a thousand at the most we would take off. But then I'm gonna take my new piston and new rings. Well, we're gonna use the old piston. I'm gonna take a new set of rings and I wanna measure that ring gap. Number one, I wanna be careful if I get aftermarket rings, I, I buy the Pro Marine rings. I've never had a problem with it, especially on Mercury's. But I want to check my ring gap. If I'm 27s, 28 thousandths, 29 thousandths, I know I'm going to be good. If I, if it's 31 thousandths, hmm, either maybe I didn't measure right, or maybe we have a problem with that ring, that set of rings. Standard rings should all be the same, but you know you get different runs and different lines. You have to check that. Now, if I happen to get a set of rings and I'm down at like 10 thousandths, now I'm gonna have to do some work on those rings. So, then I've been able to get a Dremel tool out, put my cheater glasses on, right? They do make a tool that you can put this in with a little grinding wheel. You can purchase one of those if you want to. I've never had a problem using a Dremel um, and then putting it back in, checking back and forth, really taking a minute amount off. Now you have to be careful because these pistons have a pin right there, right above my finger there, there's a pin that the rings line up on. So we want to make sure if we grind the edge of this ring, if you can see there's a little half moon on each side, right, that we have to make sure we machine that back in if we take too much off of this. Usually you don't because you want to make sure it seats inside against that pin all the way so you get the proper clearance so that's kind of the next steps we're going to go through here i just wanted to talk about that a little bit and some cheating ways of, of checking piston wall clearance to see where you're at when the pistons are out the other cylinders that have damage in them i won't even measure until i get in there with a hone and i'll start honing a little bit a little bit more now the max this is saying is ten thousandths in the book I really don't want to go over nine and a half if I don't have to. But again, I can go to 10 if my ring gap stays around 2930, because then I know I'm going to have a good 120 pound uh, compression and I want even compression. So the next thing I'm going to do after I get my hone set up and I measure it and I get as, as I'm going to make sure all of my ring gaps are similar within a thousandth of an inch. You know, if you're 5 PSI off on compression, it's not a big deal, especially when we're doing a rebuild. We know everything is new, but we want to have that balance. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to, I'm going to show you some of the honing stones that I have in the next video, and we're going to continue on with this project. Again, once again, I appreciate the comments. One more thing to show you. So yes, it's out. My outboard motor buying guide. This is for used outboard motors. Has my QR code for my YouTube channel goes over and explains some of the things that I do to check out board motors before you're buying them to make sure of their condition and some things to look out for. So look for this. Um, it's going to be available soon on my website, which is Keith at OutboardDad.com. And for my YouTube uh, channel subscribers, this is a $20 item that I'm going to give away for free. If you're a subscriber of mine and you send me a, a an email so my email is keith at outboarddad.com and you send and say hey i want the free guide for the next month so until october says the 13th until october 13th i'm going to provide it for for free for my uh, subscribers and it's a 20 dollars value it's going to be in electronic form on amazon soon um, but just wanted to promote that please like subscribe send me any comments you have and i look forward to seeing you out on the water and enjoying your boat. Have a great day.